Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now once I had put up the express painted German Grenadier, uh, questions started coming in pretty much instantly on how I would paint other things using this range. So let's go. <laughs> week after week I'm going to pop out one of these videos where I look at contrast, army painter speed paint and the Vallejo Express range and look at the easiest way to get as close to historically accurate with each of the infantry types as you can. So today obviously is going to be the American soldier and it's worth pointing out that you are ultimately going to sacrifice some historical accuracy if you're going to stick to these one coat paints. But you can get pretty close and with one or two surprising little tricks along the way. So all of the paints for this one will be listed in the description below. Let's get started. So once your miniature is assembled and cleaned up, it's time to prime them. Now this fella here, I have used Bone White from Vallejo, and it is similar to Wraithbone from Citadel. It's maybe just a little bit darker. It's lighter than Skeleton Bone from uh, the Army Painter, and it's it's my go-to for a bone sort of color. Um, any of those will work. You could even switch to a white if you wanted, um, but this is going to give us a little bit of warmth to our colors underneath, and I think it's going to work quite well. All the same, in order to help the contrast a little bit from the uh, Express range, we're going to give this a quick blast of white with a dry brush. So don't worry too much about what white or what brush you're using. Uh, just quickly blast over any exposed edges a couple of times, and you'll see we get uh, the edges of detail picked out. Uh, this is really going to help when we turn around and add our Express range. If you're worried about applying too much of this, just give a little flick along the edge of the base before you get started, and it'll give you a good idea of what you're going to leave behind. So all over everything with this. And once it has had time to dry and to settle, we're going to apply the skin tone. Now you can pick anything that you like here. I'm going to use Gilliman Flesh from Citadel because I like it. It's my favorite. So over the skin, and as always, you want to make sure that you're sort of guiding it into the recesses where you can. Uh, contrast in particular, it's very handy, but it does benefit from just a little bit of help getting where it wants to go. And with that dry, we're going to paint in his trousers. This here I'm using Commando Green. Now this is very similar to Creed Camo, uh, but just a little bit more olive in its tone. So. Quick blast of this over the trousers, then we'll let that dry. Now obviously that's going to work for the green trousers, but quick note while that dries, if you want to paint the earlier brown trousers, then what I'd suggest would be two parts of battle dress brown with one part of copper brown for a little bit of warmth. Um, the mixing is not going to take you terribly long, especially if you've got a little palette or something like that, uh, but using a single color, you're not going to get quite that right uh, brown shade, but it's up to you. If you're painting late war paratroopers or infantry and they're wearing the later M43 uniforms, it's easy to just blast the jacket with the same green at the same time, and life is simple. But these early war, the Parsons jackets, are a little bit more tricky because there isn't a single color which really is correct for them, but we can get pretty close. Now what I'm using here, this is actually bony matter from the Army Painter. Uh, if you want it to stick purely to the Express range, then Zombie Flesh is quite close to this. Uh, but this is a little less intense, and I think that's going to work better. It'll look pretty, pretty strong <laughs> going on. But as with all of these one coat paints, keep the faith. And once it's dried, it's going to look a lot more reasonable. So I'm going to paint his jacket in this, and I'm also going to paint his gaiters with it too. Now it doesn't look quite right yet, but don't worry, we are not finished. Now what I've got is Wasteland Brown, and everybody goes mad for Wasteland Brown. <laughs> this I'm going to paint over the wooden details. So this little bit on his entrenching tool, and I'm also going to paint in the wood on his carbine. Uh, when it comes to going over the, the metal parts, just go straight over everything. And we will paint in the black bits later. 
Now for his boots, I'm going to use Willow Bark, which is a nice dark sort of leathery color, uh, but it works great for boots. You can also use this to paint in the uh, strap for his helmet liner, but instead for that, what I'm going to use is mahogany. Now the beautiful thing about this is because we're going to paint with a solid acrylic later, um, I can just splat straight over the top of his helmet. I do not care all that much. Now I've spoken a little bit about American webbing in the past. Generally you had yellow and green. So what I'm using here, this is Bag of Bones, and I'm going to paint in the canvas strap on the M1 here. Um, obviously if you're painting in something with a leather strap, you could use mahogany for that as well. But as well as the yellow, there was also two basic variants on a green sort of look for the webbing. Now there was a darker green, and that would have been later war, and that's very easily done with something like uh, Plague Flesh, or even Militarum Green from Citadel. Uh, but what I've got here, I want this sort of pastel green finish. Um, it's a almost untreated khaki. But for this what I'm going to use is actually Military Shader from the Army Painter. Uh, now this here is a wash, and it is, uh, it's not going to change when the Fanatic range comes out. Uh, I think they're just changing the name. It's Military Shade rather than Military Shader. Uh, but this, bucket quite a bit of this onto the webbing. And as it dries, you'll get that funky sort of sun bleached canvas effect. Now here comes the really cool part. Because at the moment, you see I'm being quite fussy about how I apply it. But I'm not going to. I'm going to chuck it all over the jacket as well. So there's webbing straps on his chest. Blorp. <laughs> everything all at once. Because uh, I want a slightly greenish tint to the jacket that he's wearing, this is going to give me that very, very simply. So here his webbing and his jacket with a little bit of military shader. So while that isn't 100% dry on his pack, uh, you can see just what that does. Um, now the army painter washers are actually quite gloopy <laughs> if you don't thin them down, which means they will stay where you put them. It makes them ideal for using like that. What I'm going to do while that dries is actually paint in his helmet. And for this, I am using a traditional acrylic. This is Camo Olive Green from Vallejo. And this will cover over very nicely. Now, any painted metal that you've got, uh, so bazookas or that sort of thing, this is the color you're going to use for that. Now, on helmets for your infantry like this, because they are such a smooth uh, surface, you might not need to do this ordinarily, but it's good practice, especially for your bazookas and things like that. I'm going to apply a little bit of strong tone, and uh, I think that will add a bit, especially around the helmet straps. Now while that dries, it's obviously not quite dry yet, I'm going to go ahead and paint in the black details. Now here I am using Black Legion from Citadel. Um, a traditional black acrylic will do the job perfectly well. As I mentioned a few times, I just like the way that this flows, and it covers extremely well. So take your time here, be careful, and any black bits with Black Legion. Now it's just quickly occurred to me that uh, while I had the military shader out, what I should have done was done the same to his trousers. So uh, shh, don't tell anybody that I missed that step. We're going to quickly blast over the top of that now. Um, yeah, honestly, this makes it super easy doing his whole uniform at once. Theoretically. Uh, the one part I am going to skip is his gaiters. Now, purely optional step here, but while that dries, I've got a little bit of flayed one flesh. I'm going to bop this on the back of his knuckles. Spots like his chin, his nose, and his cheekbones as well. Um, not something that you have to do, but I think this will add just a little bit more to the finished product. Now, a quite common refrain is that shades tend to dry shiny, whether they be Citadel or Army Painter, you get a bit of a semi-gloss finish on the miniature, and you don't necessarily want that. It's also good practice to be varnishing your miniatures anyway, and that's what we're going to do here. I'm using Varnish Plus from Instar, and it's important that your miniature is dry. Um, 
touch dry is not going to cut it. If you can, leave these guys overnight, because otherwise, when you apply your varnish, there is a chance that what's going to happen is you're going to lift uh, particularly the, the washes off. Um, reactivate isn't quite the right word, but what ends up happening is that you have horrible streaky nonsense and a faint tint as your, uh, your varnish picks up the color from the shade. So I don't want everything to be military green. <laughs> so I've made sure that that is thoroughly dried. And over the entire miniature goes our matte varnish. And you just wait and see what that does. Now isn't that just night and day? Uh, one thing I should mention is if you are going to apply your transfers, to do that before applying the varnish. Um, I forgot, it does add a fair bit to the miniature if you've got the patience to do it. Just do it before you varnish. Protect them at the same time as you do the miniature. Now my last little trick is I have here a 2B pencil. The softer the better. Uh, if you don't have a 2B, then a B will be fine. Now it doesn't matter if it's a 2B. It can also be, or not 2B. Uh, so just a little bit of this, buffing the edges of the metallic stuff. So you don't have to come in here and uh, highlight traditionally. Once I've done this, what I'm going to do is pop his base on him, and I'll make sure the recipe for that is copied into the description. Let's get a look at what our chap looks like when he is all finished. And so there at last our American infantryman is complete. And the end result there is actually not all that bad. It's pretty close, historically speaking. Uh, in particular, that faded canvas on his webbing and equipment comes much better after a varnish, and uh, I think it looks pretty cool. It does stand out nicely against the jacket, which, likewise, looks more accurate than I thought it would. Um, you could swap that out for something like Athonian Camo Shade rather than the Military Shader, but if you can get it, like I mentioned in the video itself, the gloopiness of the, uh, the Army Painter washes is going to be to your advantage there. So consider that picking that one up. As always, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of my wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my gorgeous producers who are showing up on screen now. Thank you so much, one and all. Now, your support really makes a difference. And any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.